an ECG or an EKG. It's an electrocardiogram. It shows you the electrical activity of the heart. But how do you do one at home? My name is Leslie Samuel, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a 24-hour EKG at home using this little device right here. So let's do it. The electrical activity of the heart is a very important indicator of heart health. Now, as a reminder, in the heart, there's a pacemaker. It's called the SA node. It's a specialized group of cells that are located in the right atrium that generate an electrical signal known as an action potential. And this is the signal that travels through the heart so that the heart muscle itself can contract. As the electrical signal travels through the heart, that signal can be recorded using an ECG device an electrocardiogram device. In my video on the ECG, also known as the EKG from the German spelling, I talk about the different parts. The P wave, which shows the depolarization of the atria, the QRS complex showing the depolarization of the ventricles, and the T wave showing the repolarization of the ventricles. Now, if that sounds like a different language to you, don't worry about it. Watch that video and you'll get a full explanation of all of that. This ECG gives you a good idea of how well the heart is functioning. And it can cue you in when there are issues like an atrial fibrillation, heart defects, abnormal heart rhythms or arrhythmias, and a bunch of other issues. There are all kinds of devices that can be used to take an ECG at home. In fact, my watch even does an ECG. But in order to get a full picture of your heart function, a doctor might order you to wear a device that's called a halter monitor. Here's why this is important. Yeah, you can get a quick ECG using a bunch of devices. Like I said, even my watch has an ECG monitor. However, my watch does it for 30 seconds at a time. It's like when you take a car into a shop and when you're there for like 30 minutes or so, your, your car acts perfectly, but then you get home and it starts acting up again. Well, your heart's activity varies throughout the day. So in cases where there are potential heart issues, a doctor may want to monitor your heart's activity continuously for longer periods of time to be able to diagnose any issues with greater certainty. Now, a traditional halter monitor is a device that you might put in your pocket or attach on your belt. It usually has like five leads that attach to sticky pads that are attached to your thoracic region in different places. But the folks over at WellU have sent me over a different kind of 24-hour ECG monitor that has some really cool features. Now, this video is sponsored by WellU, but the opinions are 100% my own. My goal here is to show you how it works, as well as to teach you the biology behind what this thing and others like it actually show. The first thing you'll notice is how small this device is, is this little device right here. Now, there are two ways that you can wear this. You can put on a chest strap and just strap it on, or you can attach two electrodes and stick it onto your chest. I'm gonna demonstrate both of them. The first way is the easiest. If you don't wanna stick these electrodes on, you can take this strap, here's the strap. You can see it has two little connection points that I can use to snap this on. So I'm going to go ahead and just snap this on really quick. Now, what I want to do here really quick is just take a little bit of water and put it right there at those connection points. That's going to help with catching the signal. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to strap this on to my chest. Well, actually right below my chest. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now put it under here, bring it around the other side. And there's a little hook that you can do right here. And you will see on here, there's an R and you wanna make sure the R, I don't know if you can see it, but you wanna make sure the R is on the right side. And then I'm gonna just strap it right under my chest. And that's pretty much it. I have my monitor on. I'm ready to take my EKG. It's simple as that. Now, I will say that I tried this first way and it didn't work very well for me. Evidently, I move around during my sleep a whole lot. And when I looked at the ECG report that I got after using it the first night, there was a whole lot of crazy stuff going on. You could see that there were times where I was moving around like crazy and it really messed up the signal. So let me show you the way that worked better for me. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Then I'm gonna take this off. And now I have these two ECG patches right here 
that I can use to attach to it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Attach one. Attach the next one. And what you're basically going to do, once again, the R should be to the right. But you're going to put this on the left side of your chest. And you're going to attach one close to your sternum. And the other one, it's going to go down at about a 45 degree angle. And that's how you want to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the sticky parts. So one is off. Peel that. And there's kind of like a gel-like substance right here. So I'm going to make sure once again that I have the R facing the right. It's going to go down at a 45 degree angle. And that looks about right. And this side. So now I have them both on. It's connected and it's ready to go. Now, once this is stuck on there, it's actually stuck on there really well. It's not going anywhere. Now, of course, you don't want to take a shower with it on, but you can keep it on once you're not in the shower and you can just go about your daily activity. Pretty convenient, I would say. Once you attach it, it's just going to start monitoring and you're good to go. Another thing is that it comes with an app. You can use the app to see your ECG in real time. Let me go ahead and show you how this works. So once I've opened up the app, as you can see on the screen here, it's showing a number of things. Right at the top, you can see that it's showing my heart rate, which right now is 83, 84 beats per minute. And it's just gonna continue monitoring that heart rate. And then you can see there's a graph right below that. And the graph is showing it more visually. Let's see if I can get myself worked up really quick. I'm gonna jump around and see if that increases my heart rate. Come on, come on, let's do it. Okay, it's going up, 85. 87, 88, 89, 90, oh, 96. <laughs> oh, we've got to 100. Yes, so you can visually see it and you can see the actual number. Uh, I need to slow down now. And at the bottom, you can see that ECG. You can see that it's showing the entire thing there. There's a section where you can record the ECG. If you click on that button, it will record it onto this device directly. But there is a limitation. It can only record a maximum of 30 minutes on the device. But it's really cool. You can just monitor your heart rate at any point during the day. You can monitor your ECG just to see how things are going. You can do that in real time. But the device itself will actually record your ECG all day and store it for you to analyze it after the fact. Now, here's the cool part. Let's say you've had it on for 24 hours. Then you're going to take it off and you can connect it to your computer using a provided USB cable and then import the results. Then you can have its AI analyze your ECG report to do some preliminary diagnosis. It'll let you know if it detected any atrial fibrillation or abnormal heartbeats. It'll alert you of any tachycardia or other arrhythmias. And that's extremely powerful. Without even going to your doctor, you can get preliminary information. Now, it's still follow up with a medical professional if you're noticing any potential problems with your ECG. But I love that these devices are getting smarter and smarter and in more convenient packages. Okay, so I did this. Let's look at my ECG report with AI analysis to see how I'm doing. All right, so here we have my ECG report. Uh, you can see it gives some basic information, name, gender, and age. Now, I'm not going to go through every single thing because there's so much in here, but I'm going to point out some of the main things. For example, you can see, uh, maybe I'd zoom in a little bit. You can see the number of heartbeats, uh, maximum heart rate. It tells you the percentage of atrial flutter or fibrillation, the average heart rate, minimum heart rate. It gives you the maximum RR interval and a whole bunch of things. It tells you if there are any supraventricular rhythms. You can see here I have a couplet of PAC. That's a premature atrial contraction. Basically, between each atrial contraction, there's a certain amount of time. But every once in a while, you know you ever had that thing where you felt like your heart skipped a beat or your heart, there was like a quick heartbeat, and then it just went back to normal? That could be a premature atrial contraction. Instead of waiting the normal amount of time, it can contracted prematurely. And you can see I have one couplet of PAC. I'll show you that in a second. And since it's a couplet, two together, the total number of supraventricular heartbeats would be two. And then it gives a whole bunch of other stuff, um, any premature ventricular contraction and so on. It 
tells you about your heart rate variability. And there's a whole lot of details that go along with that. Now, when I saw that I had a couplet of PAC, I wanted to know what was going on. So I reached out to a good friend of mine who is a medical doctor and she looked at it and she told me, hey, you have nothing to worry about. These things happen every so often. She wouldn't be concerned about it unless there were symptoms that I was experiencing that went along with a significant number of premature atrial contractions, then I would need further evaluation. Seeing one or two or a few is not necessarily a bad thing. So I'm going to give a special shout out to my friend, Dr. Kisoni Blair. Thank you so much for making me feel better about my premature atrial contraction. In her words, it's mostly benign unless you're seeing some kind of symptoms. Then you wanna check it out. But as you can see, you're getting a lot of information here. And I'm gonna actually scroll down uh, to show you that it gives you, you know, the maximal heart rate, it's showing you how that looked, the minimum heart, heart rate, you can see it's slower here, it's faster here, and with my couplet of PAC, here you have a certain interval between these and these and these, but then all of a sudden you see this quick little flutter of these two premature contractions that were closer together than all of the others. So it's also showing you these details visually. There's a lot of data that you're getting from this report. So as you can see, you can get a lot of good information with this device. But are there any issues with it? Yes, there are. No device is ever perfect. At least I haven't found one. First off, as I mentioned earlier, for me, the chest strap, I wouldn't use it. It's kind of useless. And while I do see that they're trying to make it easy for you to get into monitoring your ECG, I wouldn't use it unless you're, you're not going to be doing a lot of movement. So if you're just doing a simple ECG or for a shorter period of time and you know you're going to be relaxing, maybe that's a good time to use the chest strap. Secondly, if you do decide like me, you want to use these patches, know that when you purchase it, it comes with 10 patches. And once you open the packaging, it says that you want to use them within 30 days. So if you're going to be using it more long term or at some point later in the future, you're going to have to purchase additional patches. The good thing, though, is that they aren't very expensive. Besides those few really minor issues, the convenience you get using this as opposed to some of the other more cumbersome halter monitors is pretty awesome. Do I recommend it? Well, if you're trying to get a detailed view of the electrical activity of your heart, this is a, a great tool. I'll be using it personally at least once a month to get an idea of where I stand. Although, knowing myself, it'll probably be much more than that. I'm kind of a trackaholic. By the way, the folks over at WellU have given me a special discount link that I can share with you to get a discount on your purchase. So make sure to check that out if you use that link. Uh, that does go to support the channel in that we get a little bit of a kickback. But it doesn't cost you any extra. In fact, it saves you money. So it's a win-win. Now, this is my first time doing a video like this. I'm curious to get your feedback. If you'd like me to do more videos like this where I use tech to explain biology, let me know in the comments below. And if you have ideas for what kind of tech you'd like me to use to explain biology, let me know that as well. My name is Leslie Samuel. That's it for this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.